Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Pat, and I'm Tom. And today it's our health unit. As we near the end of February here, we're talking about something called motion sickness. Oh dear, that's、yeah. no fun at all. Do you suffer from motion sickness at all?、Pat? I I don't. Suffer particularly if I'm trying to read in the car. Then yeah, I'd probably get it. But I'm thinking of my poor wife who gets a bit of plane sickness, sea sickness, car sickness. She's not a great traveller. Well,、wow, sounds like my wife as well.、Uh, she can't really do much travelling.、Uh, she can drive. She always wants to drive because then she has control、okay. of what she looks at and stuff. And、uh, if she's not driving, she wants to be sure she's in the front in the seat. Front, exactly the same. Yeah, we make sure Z is in the front so she can not feel so sick because the back maybe swings around a bit more and makes her more uncomfortable. How about when she's in a tunnel? Does she have problems there too? Not that I can remember. I don't remember her saying that. She she's got better over the years, and she takes medicine with her just in case she starts to feel really bad. She tends to just it kind of turns her brain off and she falls asleep. Ooh, her response、okay. to feeling a bit uncomfortable. Is just to sleep. It's like she shuts down, like a computer. Okay. But what is motion sickness? We can find out by reading through today's article. Your long-awaited road trip to Taroko Gorge is off to a great start. Your friend is at the wheel for the next hour, and you have the latest bestseller in your hand. Within the first paragraph, the author has you completely engaged. However, Just as the plot thickens, you're rudely interrupted by feelings of queasiness. It's as if your breakfast decided to backtrack and make its way up your esophagus. You, my friend, are experiencing motion sickness. The human brain is a very complex machine that tries to make sense of everything. The brain knows when we're moving about, our muscles are in motion, our eyes are taking note of the distance we've traveled. And the fluids in our inner ears are keeping us balanced. Nonetheless, when we sit on a bus, a train, or an airplane, the brain's understanding of movement is contradicted. Our inner ears detect movement, but our bodies are stationary. These conflicting messages confuse our logical brain. It becomes convinced that we are being poisoned and wants to expel this poison from our systems. Scientists aren't sure why some people are more prone to motion sickness than others, but one thing's for sure: reassuring your brain that everything is functioning normally can help prevent motion sickness. Put that book down and look out the window so your brain has visual proof that you are moving. You should also avoid fatty or greasy meals before hitting the road. Finally, it's a good idea to sit facing the direction in which you're traveling. And rest your head against the seat back to keep your head still. All of these things can help your brain make sense of the movements you're experiencing, and keep the barf bag at bay on your next road trip. Okay, so that is our article, and it's all about motion sickness, which is part of the title, and it basically is explained in the entire article what motion sickness actually is. It's when you get sick when you're moving, usually in a car, in a plane, on a bus, in, on a boat. Although that's kind of seasickness,、mm. kind of a different sort of thing that's got the up and down as well as the motion part gets people very ill. But it's a kind of conflict in the brain. So everything starts off well. Your long-awaited road trip to Taroko Gorge is off to a great start. So you're driving maybe from Taipei or somewhere else into Taroko Gorge over on the east coast, and everything's off to a great start. So things are going well. The weather is nice. The roads are clear. You know, you're feeling good. You're feeling awake, and everything. Everyone's happy and looking forward to it. That's what we mean by getting off to a great start. Indeed, and so you are going to Taroko Gorge, but、uh, this next sentence is kind of confusing to me. It says, "Your friend is at the wheel for the next hour, and you have the latest bestseller in your hand." So maybe it takes an hour to drive to the base of Taroko Gorge or something. I think it's more to do with you're driving there, and your friend's going to drive for the first hour. Then maybe you'll take a rest and swap over before you keep going, because it is a, a few hours from Taipei. Say, if you were going driving on a road trip. 
from Taipei. Right, but、uh, I guess I'm kind of confused as to why someone would want to be reading a book. That is confusing. Yeah. yeah, that was confusing for me because my goodness, the scenery between Taipei and Taroko and in Taroko itself is fantastic. It is. It's gorgeous. It's magnificent. Why would you want to be reading a book while you're doing that? But in any case, for the sake of argument, this is what's happening. You have the latest bestseller in your hand. You know, a bestseller, a book that a lot of people are buying at this particular time. At the wheel means you're driving. Hey, I'm at the wheel. I'm driving, and then you'll switch over, or we'll switch over to you when we get to Taroko Elon, or maybe, Elon、yeah. or something like that. And within the first paragraph, the author has you completely engaged. So we could say it's a real page turner. It's a gripping novel. You're really into it. The first paragraph is written so well. You think, oh boy, I can't wait to read more of this novel. However, just as the plot thickens or get kind of gets more interesting, things happen. You know, just as the the story is getting really exciting, and you know what's going on, I can't wait to know. You're rudely interrupted by feelings of queasiness. So, if you're interrupted, then that means whatever you're doing is stopped. Something stops you from continuing it and forces you to do something else, or you know, takes your attention away. Something like that stops whatever you're doing. And in this case, it's feelings of queasiness. Queasiness means kind of discomfort. You're kind of feeling sick, maybe a little dizzy. You want to throw up. Your stomach feels really uncomfortable. Maybe you're having trouble kind of breathing, or you're feeling a little bit of pain. But it's mostly that feeling of oh, I feel a bit sick. Mm -hmm. And、uh, queasy is the adjective here. Queasiness is the noun. I would say queasy as an adjective is used more frequently. Oh, I'm feeling a bit queasy right now、yeah. after that、uh, elevator ride in Taipei One. Oh yeah, that'll do it. It's really fast going from the.、Uh, Ground floor all the way up to the observation deck. That could make anyone feel queasy, but here you have a feeling of queasiness, or you're feeling kind of queasy. It's as if, or it's like, your breakfast decided to backtrack and make its way up your esophagus. Ooh, that sounds kind of gross. That、actually. is gross, but that's exactly how it feels. Yeah, to backtrack just basically means to go in reverse, to go the reverse direction. So of course you want to keep your food down. In your stomach, you just had breakfast, and then you hit the road, and you're looking forward to an exciting trip. But then suddenly, you feel queasy, and it's as if your breakfast wants to kind of make its way back up your esophagus.、Uh, make its way just means to go, or to go in the direction of a certain direction. And the esophagus, of course, is the tube from the back of your throat down to your stomach. Yep. And as our author says, you, my friend, are experiencing motion sickness. This This is exactly what it feels like, but why? Well, the article goes on to say the human brain is a very complex, meaning complicated, machine that tries to make sense of everything. So our brains try and understand everything. They're receiving signals from our eyes, from our nose, from our ears, from our fingers. It's receiving all these signals to try and understand where we are and what is going on. Maybe sometimes when it shouldn't be trying to understand it all. Exactly. So yeah, it's all about psychology here. So the human brain is complex, and we want to make sense of everything. We don't want to be confused. We don't want to look stupid. And so the brain is always trying to make sense of things, to understand them, to apply logic to them. And the brain knows when we are moving about. Okay, so the brain is very aware of when we are moving. We can see things moving with our vision. We can hear sounds coming and going. We can probably feel the wind. Going Going across our skin and stuff like that, we might even be able to smell and taste things too. Who knows? That's right. And one of the clues is our muscles are in motion, so we can feel our legs going up and down when we walk. We can feel our arms moving as we walk, that kind of thing. And our eyes are taking note of the distance we've travelled. So our eyes are looking around and saying, "I'm this much closer to where I'm going. I'm this much farther away from where I was." And they're taking note to take note. 
note of something just means to notice it, to kind of record it, to catalog it, and to keep track of what's going on. So our muscles are giving messages to the brain, our eyes are doing it, and the fluids or liquids in our inner ears are keeping us balanced. The inner ears are this kind of set of little bones and other things inside our skulls. They're not on the outside of our ears; they're just inside, and they keep us balanced. It's one of the organs that make sure we keep standing upright and not kind of falling over or being feeling sick because we think we're sideways instead of upwards. Exactly. So all these things affect our balance,、uh, like the fluids in our inner ears.、Uh, fluids are kind of like、uh, thick liquids, basically. Yeah, kind of. We've got fluids in there flowing back and forth and stuff. They all keep us balanced as we're trying to make sense of the world around us. I did want to go back to this、uh, phrase: "Take note of."、Mm-hmm. Uh, we have another phrase to take notes, which has an S there. That means you're attending a lecture or something or a speech, and you're writing things down for future. Reference. So that phrase is to take notes. Then you would use the plural form of note there. But in this phrase, to kind of be aware of your surroundings is to take note of something. So please don't say take notes of something. That's incorrect. So again, we're taking note of everything all around us, and those fluids and the stuff in our inner ears are keeping us balanced. Nevertheless, when we sit on a bus, if we're sitting. In a train or on an airplane, the brain's understanding of movement is contradicted. So here we have the phrase "contradict." No, we don't. Yes, we do. No, we don't. Yes, we do. Yes, I'm contradicting myself here, which means something is true here and then something is not true here. They're contradicting. Yep. So these two pieces of information are not the same. On one hand, we've got wait a minute, we're sitting still, we're not moving, and then they go wait a minute, something's moving, we're moving. Are we moving? Are we not moving? Our eyes say we're staying still, our muscles say we're staying still, but I'm moving. So they're contradicting. There are these two pieces of information. We're kind of they're in conflict. They're not making sense. As the article says, our inner ears detect movement. But our bodies are stationary; they're still. So, how does the brain deal with this this kind of contradiction, which is the noun form of contradict? Because these conflicting messages confuse our logical brain. So the messages are conflicting; they don't match up with each other. One says one thing, and one says the other. They are in a conflict; they don't agree. So, like we said, our ears say we're moving; our bodies say we're still. No wonder our brain gets confused because it's used to simple logical messages that match with each other, not contradictions, not conflicting messages. It just doesn't like it. It doesn't, and again, these are conflicting messages. That's an adjective to conflict. That's the verb. That means they don't agree. And conflict is the noun form when you have two or more things that aren't agreeing or they're struggling with each other. That is a conflict, like a military conflict. But these are conflicting messages. Our brains are so confused, and the brain becomes convinced that we are being poisoned and wants to expel this poison from our. Systems. I don't think it actually thinks it's really getting poisoned, like getting a quicksilver poured in our ears or something like that. But in any case, it just wants to get rid of this confusion. To expel something just means to get rid of something.、Uh, when I see this word "expel," of course, I think of、uh, being bad in school,、mm-hmm. and you might get expelled from school. They'll kick you out and probably not allow you in for some time. And of course, to expel poison, you'd basically need. To throw up or vomit, you know, you need to be sick. That's how you get rid of the poison inside you. So that's what the brain wants to do, and that's why our body feels sick. We'll talk a bit more about motion sickness in a few moments, but right now it's time to go to our Chinese teacher. Hello, everyone. My name is Tina. 我们今天要谈论的主题叫做 motion sickness. 首先来看到第一个空格，在这里提到 within the first paragraph, the author has you completely blank one. 已经准备好要去旅行，然后手中拿着最新的畅销书。在阅读第一段的时候，作者已经让你完全的怎么样？第一题的 A 选项 engaged。有忙于其中的意思。Be notified, 通知。C secured. 
观景的 ，D polished 磨光的，擦亮的。当然喽，你完全沉浸在这样子的小说当中，所以搭配文艺第一题，我们可以选择 A engaged， 延伸起来有专注的意思。However, just blend two. The plot thickens. You are rudely interrupted by feelings of quizziness. 然而啊，怎么样？这个当情节 thickens 变得呢越来越复杂的时候，你却被一种恶心想吐的感觉 quizziness 给无理的打断了。有没有注意到？这是两个句子，我们需要一个连接词。第二题的 A 选项 until。直到 B as 正当什么时候 C unless 除非 D though 虽然正当情节变复杂，你却被这种恶心想吐的感觉给打扰了。所以搭配文艺第二题的标准答案，我们可以选择 B 选项的 as。而第三个空格呢，前面提到说呢，其实大脑是一个非常复杂的机器，它知道肌肉处于运动状态，但是呢，事实上我们在坐车的时候却是静止不动的。在这里提到 blank three， 后面提到 when we sit on the bus。A train or an airplane, the brain's understanding of movement is contradicted. 其实呢，当我们坐在巴士、火车或飞机，大脑对于这种移动的认知呢，则是互相矛盾抵触的。如果你真的在跑、在跳，大脑知道你在移动；可是我们坐在车子上的时候呢，其实肌肉是没有在动的，所以对大脑的认知就开始有了矛盾抵触。所以搭配文艺第三题，我们来看一下 A 选项。Furthermore, 再者 B, accordingly, 因此 C, eventually, 最后 D, nonetheless, 然而前面提到呢，要肌肉处于运动状态，大脑才会知道我们在运动。但是我们坐在公车上，肌肉没有运动到，所以大脑对于移动的理解是矛盾的。第三题搭配文艺，我们在这里可以选择 D 选项的 nonetheless。接着第四题提到 ，our inner ears detect movement， but our bodies are。Blank four. 在这样子的同时呢，我们的内耳它有来负责它的液体保持平衡，它可以侦测到我们的移动。但是我们的身体坐在这些椅子上面是怎么样的呢？第四题 A 选项 abundant 充足的 ，B stationary 静止不动的 ，C contagious 传染的 ，D impulsive。冲动的，我们的身体坐在椅子上是静止不动的，所以第四题的标准答案我们就选择 B stationary. We're going to take a short break now, but please stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hi everybody! Welcome back. So we're talking about motion sickness. We've kind of got an understanding that the brain is getting confused by these conflicting messages, so it wants to be sick to try and get rid of what it believes is a poison. The article continues and says scientists aren't sure why some people are more prone to motion sickness than others. Now, as Tom and I both said, our wives seem to be worse at traveling and more prone to motion sickness than we are. Scientists don't know why, but if you're prone to something, you're more likely to be affected by that thing. So, if you're prone to mood swings, you get mood swings. If you're prone to depression, you're more likely to feel sad and down and upset by things. 
Or I could say that the east coast of Taiwan is prone to landslides, especially during typhoons. So it's not a good idea to drive your car from Elon to Hualien during a typhoon because the area is prone to falling rocks or landslides and stuff like that. So yeah, some people are more prone to motion sickness than others, like our wives, like you said. It doesn't really bother me so much. Although one time, I just puked my guts out、mm -hmm. on. A boat trip from、uh, Lanyu to Luda. Yeah, that、time. can be a bit rough. I've heard that was the worst thing that ever happened to me for a long time. I didn't have any more puke in my stomach、mm -hmm. to puke out. It was there were dry heaves. Yes, as we often say,、uh, that was quite painful. But、uh, most of the other time, I'm not prone to motion sickness. And some people are more prone to motion sickness than others. But one thing's for sure: reassuring your brain that everything is functioning normally can help. Prevent motion sickness. So yeah, you kind of have to play mind games with yourself. You need to reassure your brain that no, it's not being poisoned. You don't need to throw up. You just have to be convinced that、uh, yeah, we're moving, but we're okay. There's no poison coming in. You need to reassure your brain that everything is okay. To reassure just means to get rid of the doubts, get rid of the fear. To reassure someone that everything is going to be okay. That's right. So what we're saying is, if your brain's getting mixed messages that make it feel sick, you need to make sure the messages aren't mixed. You need to kind of convince it it's okay, brain. We're really moving. All is well. Okay. So the article says, put that book down and look out the window, so your brain has visual proof. That you're moving. So if you see the scenery passing you by, you get visual proof. Visual means to do with vision, to do with your eyes. You can see it. Okay. So the brain goes, okay. The inner ear tells me we're moving. These visual images, my eyes are telling me we're moving. Okay, I'm reassured. I'm a lot happier, and I'm convinced we're moving. All is well. It might be kind of hard to do that on a boat when it's kind of going up and down. Oh yeah, that, that'd give you the wrong signals. Like we said, seasickness is a little—it's a, a special, nasty form of motion sickness. Yeah, that's why I always want to fly to Orchid Island or Green Island and not take a boat again. I don't want to risk that happening again. But yes, indeed, you need to give your brain some visual proof that you are moving. Look at the scenery. Put down that、uh, bestseller. Yeah, it's、uh, a great book, and it's a Real page turner, and the author really got your attention in the first paragraph. But you can always read that later when you're at the hotel or back home or whatever. Take a look at that scenery. Also, here's something else you can do. You should also avoid fatty or greasy meals before hitting the road. Fatty means food with a lot of fat in it, and also if something's greasy or greasy, as some people pronounce, means it's probably something that was cooked. With a lot of oil, yeah, fried stuff, deep fried stuff. I have to say, I I have failed this particular piece of advice. There's nothing I like more than a nice big cooked breakfast, a big fried、oh. breakfast, to start a road trip. It's just so tempting. I know. Yeah. So yeah, maybe I have, but I don't. I'm not prone to motion sickness, so I can take it.、Uh, we also saw the phrase "hitting the road." To hit the road means to set off, to start driving somewhere, to go out, get in your car, and begin. In the journey. Okay, now back on this idea of how to combat motion sickness, the article says finally it's a good idea to sit facing the direction in which you're traveling, and rest your head against the seat back to keep your head still. Okay, that makes sense as well. If you're going in the direction you're traveling, that's going to give your inner ears the right message. If you sit, I know my wife doesn't like to sit on the bus facing the back. Yeah, she finds that uncomfortable. I don't mind it, but yeah, so that makes sense because then your body feels like I'm going in one direction and my eyes are going in that direction. But if you turn around, then it'll be like I'm going backwards. Wait, that can't be right. Yeah, it is quite unsettling when that happens.、Mm -hmm. And also, you want to keep your head still because that stops too many feelings of. Being out of balance or being in motion. So if you keep your head still, then the rest of the messages all line up, and you go, "Ah, that's good. I know what's going on."
So I guess、uh, they're kind of advising against、uh, standing up on the bus and starting to dance around and stuff like that.、Mm-hmm. You'll probably get motion sickness if you do that, amongst other things. Indeed. So yes,、uh, don't、uh, face in the opposite direction. You're traveling. Rest your head against the.、Uh, Uh, seat back or the back of the seat, and then keep that head still. And all of these things can help your brain make sense of the movement you're experiencing, and keep the barf bag at bay on your next road trip. Okay, so again, these things can all help your brain make sense of the movement you're experiencing, which again is what's going on there. The brain is confused; it's conflicted about what it's seeing and what it's experiencing. So yes, do some of these things, and you should. Should be okay, and also we've got the term here to keep something at bay, which means to keep it from becoming a nuisance or to prevent it from being a problem. Yeah, and in this case, the thing we want to keep at bay or keep away from us is the barf bag. Now, barf is a good piece of slang, a good colloquial word to mean throwing up, vomiting, being sick. And I think it comes from the fact that when you do it, it does sound like you're going barf.、Mm. So there you go. It's one of those sound words. So a barf bag is the bag you get when you throw up into it, and you get these on airplanes. They're always in the seat in front of you. That is a barf bag. It's got a. I call it a sick bag. I mean, other people have other names for it, but you could call it a barf bag because you barf or vomit or throw up into the bag, and you want to keep that at bay. You don't want to be doing that on your next road trip. Yeah, it's a good thing they provide those on、uh, airplanes because my wife usually gets airsick, and of course she needs to use an air sickness bag、mm-hmm. quite frequently. Barf bag is slang, so I suppose you could ask the flight attendant for a barf bag if you're on a plane. I think they know what you meant. They know what you mean, but the more formal word is air sickness bag. Okay, well, the, here is one thing that will not give you any sickness. It's our Chinese teacher. Let's hand you over. 接着，我们来看到第五个句子的，它写着 ：Scientists aren't sure why blank five more prone to motion sickness than others。我们讲到这一些人呢，他们不了解为什么这一些人比起其他人更容易有晕车这样的倾向。我们要注意，在这里 ，why 它所引导的是一个名词子句，所以 why 后面要加主词，再加 be 动词。而搭配 prone to be prone to， 则是解释成为有怎么样的倾向。所以第五题搭配文法句构，我们标准答案选择 C。Some people are。而这时候怎么办呢？在这里提供了一个解决的方式。在第六个空格句子写着。Put that book down and look out the window, so your brain has visual blank that you are moving. 这时候啊，就别再看书了，往窗外看看吧。这样一来，你的大脑才能够知道你呢在移动，因为它有一些 visual 视觉上的什么。第六题 ，A proof 证据 ，B torture 折磨 ，C bruise 伤痕 ，D license。执照，看看外面，大脑就有了视觉上的证据，证明你在移动当中。第六题的标准答案，我们选择 A proof. Finally, it's a good idea to sit facing the direction blank seven you are traveling. 最后一个呢，有一个好的想法，就是你坐的时候要面对这个方向。这个方向是你正在旅行的方向。而在这里就要考考同学喽。搭配 the direction， 我们要用的介系词是 in， 朝着怎么样的方向？我们会说 in the direction you are traveling in the direction。所以第七题标准答案我们就选择 D in which。Okay, 以上就是今天的课文讲解。谢谢收听。All right, that is the end of today's lesson. Keep all that good advice in mind the next time you go for a drive somewhere with your friends, and it should keep motion sickness at bay. Thank you for listening, everybody. For English Digest, I'm Pat, and I'm Tom. Talk、Goodbye. to you again. Bye bye.